Hi, welcome to our first video on series and sequences. This is an introductory part and uh, it's gonna be split up into two videos. So just to get started, why not jump in with a warm up? Since this is a brand new topic, um, the biggest thing to recognize here is patterns. So can you recognize some patterns? So let's develop those habits together. So if I asked you for the next four terms of the following, some of you can immediately just boom, 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 you know your answer. However, let's go through the process of pattern recognition here. So what patterns do we notice? Well, we notice that they are evens and they are multiples of something. They're multiples of four, but we are missing some. So it can't just be straight up the multiples of four. And the other thing I notice is that it's decreasing. So something is happening to each of these numbers to knock it down a little bit, right? But they're decreasing rather quickly. So instead of simply subtraction, we should also look at division as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and try both subtraction and division. On the left-hand side, we have subtraction. A pattern is clearly occurring on the left-hand side, but a really nice pattern is occurring with division. 32 divided by 16 is two. 16 divided by eight is two. Eight divided by four is also two. So ding, 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 that's our pattern. So we're gonna go ahead and continue on with that pattern. Four divided by two, two divided by two, one divided by two, a half divided by two, so on and so forth. And we end up with the following four terms of the sequence. Yeah, that's it. But let's try one just a little harder. What if I have 1, 2, 4, 7, 11, 16, and 22? So again, what patterns do I notice? Well, it's neither odd, or even, neither odd nor even. It is not a multiple of anything. And it is increasing, but not very quickly. So more than likely it's addition, but I'm gonna try multiplication just in case. So I go ahead and do uh, my pattern. And on the right-hand side, I notice that as I'm dividing to see if any multiplication is happening, sure, there could be, but I don't see a discernible pattern. But when I look at my addition subtraction, hey, there's a very clear pattern, one, two, three, four. The next number is probably five and then six and so on. So to, to make this very visually easy for you, I did it as a, as a table. You don't have to do it this way, of course. So here are my original numbers. This is the pattern we just figured out that we're adding one and then two and then three and so forth. And here's how we solve that second term. So we're on 22, so 22 plus seven uh, becomes 20, 29 and then plus eight, 37, and then so on and so forth. So there are four final terms and we've got our finished sequence. That's it. So when we talk about uh, what is a sequence, you really just define it for yourself. It's just a set of numbers that has some sort of pattern um, that is probably evident either by yourself or with a formula. We're gonna talk about series, but we're gonna do that in our next video. We've got some new notation to look for. Today you're looking for what the heck N means and what A sub N means. We will look at S sub N and sigma in the next video. Our new vocabulary is gonna be infinite versus finite. We'll see that right off the bat. Explicit versus recursive. And finally, convergent versus divergent. But again, we'll see that in the part two video. So let's dive on in. Sequences. You've already seen them. You really kind of know what they look like. But just to break it down one more time, that first one is going to be the first term represented as a sub one more often than not. Not always. And we'll get into some of those crazier cases as the videos go on. Second term, third term, fourth term. Again, that could be a sub four. The dot, dot, dot means it goes on forever. So this is a sequence. It's a list of things that are in an order. So looking at some sequences. Do you notice anything majorly different between the left and the right hand side? If you went, ah, oh, the dot, dot, dot is missing, then you got our first two vocab words. When you have a dot, 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 this is called an infinite sequence. It means the sequence continues on and on forever following that same pattern. If we have a finite sequence, then this is just it. The sequence is just one, three, five, seven, and that's it. It doesn't continue on. So find the next four terms of the infinite sequence, two comma seven comma 12 comma 17. Pretty easy. We're going to go ahead and see if there's any pattern that we notice. It is, they are neither odd nor even, but it is increasing. And it's not increasing super quick. So I'm going to guess something is being added. So let's just do a simple check. Uh, look for the difference between them. Here's a simple check that there is a difference of 5 between each. 2 plus 5 is 7. 7 plus 5 is 12. 12 plus 5 is 17. So we're going to continue adding 5. The fifth term then would be 17 plus 5. The sixth term the seventh term, and the eighth term. 
I did it all based off of that original fourth term, but you could have absolutely done 22 plus 5 is 27. 27 plus 5 is 32. 32 plus 5 is 37. You 100% could have done that. Peanut butter and jelly to each their own. But there is our end answer. And when you're like, oh my gosh, it really is that simple, I'm going to tell you it really, really is. So let's keep going. Find the next four terms of this sequence. It is a new, unique sequence. 2, 5, 10, 17. So let's do a quick check. 5 minus 2 is 3. 10 minus 5 is 5. Oh, we've got a difference there. So let's actually do the math and check for ourselves. One possible pattern for this one is that the sum of the difference is equal to the odd sequence. That's kind of an ugly thing to look at just in words. So let's see it visually for ourselves. If I take the second term minus the first, 5 minus 2, I end up with 3. The third term minus the second, the fourth term minus the third, there's the pattern that we can now see. Three, five, seven, it looks like a sequence of odds. So let's complete that sequence of odd numbers. Nine, 11, 13, and 15. Now we've got our pattern inside of our pattern. We're not quite done. So there's our pattern inside our pattern. Let's go ahead and plug it in. Let's take 17 and we're gonna add the pattern inside the pattern, nine. Then what's the next number? We're gonna take 26 and we're gonna add the pattern inside the pattern, 11. Then we're gonna add 37 to 13. Then we're gonna add 52, 15. And that's, that's it. There's our end answer, end of example. <laughs> All right, but what if they give you something crazier? What if they do give you something that looks like this? In fact, you shouldn't be scared. This should actually be the easiest one because they've given you what's called an explicit formula. It means that you can solve any term because you're given the explicit formula. So let's try it. It wants the next four terms of the sequence. So that means a sub one, a sub two, a sub three, and a sub four all have to be solved. So I literally just plug and chug. So a sub one is equal to two times one times negative one to the first power. Boom. Solved. Next one, next one, next one. You're done. Again, this is called an explicit sequence uh, formula and so what the means is you can solve any term at any point you don't need any information about a previous term here is all the formal definition of explicit versus recursive but of course do i ever want you to memorize formal definitions absolutely not instead should you understand how to use that vocabulary absolutely miss jag so let's learn how to distinguish between explicit and recursive formulas by actually practicing with a recursive formula so if i want to find the fifth term of this recursively defined sequence. Well, they tell me the first term and then they give me a formula. Okay, well, let's go ahead and try plugging in five. A sub five is equal to A sub five minus one. Well, what's A sub five minus one? That's gonna be A sub four. In order to solve A sub five, I need A sub four. Hmm. So let's go ahead and start with A sub two. Since we know A one, let's start with N equals two. Plug it in and look what happens. Each formula is going to require access to the previous term. So that's what the di big difference between explicit and recursive. Recursive, you need information about the previous terms in order to solve for those. So this time I'm not gonna just plug in five and go. I have to plug in for two, then three, then four, and then of course, five. And now we have our answer. So, hmm, recursive formulas need information about the previous term. Makes sense. That's exactly the information you actually need to know from that little bit of information. And I think that's all I've got for you right now. Uh, in our next video, we will be talking about what is a series, uh, the new notation S sub N and sigma, and finally, what is convergent and divergent. Thank you.